Good morning, welcome to worship at Mulberry Street United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you chose to join us this morning. We invite you to invite some of your friends to worship with us this morning. Also, look down in the lower right corner of your screen and find the share button and share this broadcast so that others will want to come to worship the Lord this morning with us through Mulberry Street. Again, welcome. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, sight, and feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this space. We wear our hearts on our sleeve. We trust that even now, God is here. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship Holy God. first pitch of opening season. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of family home for Christmas. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of cordial conversations between parties. I dream of more bridges and fewer walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today, we light, we light the, the candle, candle of, of peace. peace. May it remind, remind us, us that, that there, there is another, another way. way. Amen.
us pray. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our mind. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist. Preparing the way. Gathering the crowd. Spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, email, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for this second Sunday of Advent is from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Listen to the word of God. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. 
Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and he recompenses before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's psalm is Psalm 85. Our scripture this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, the first eight verses. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message, After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. During this Advent season, we are considering dreams.
Now, one of my favorite things to do in the time leading up to Christmas is go to a concert. Most of us like to go to concerts. We enjoy doing that. I like a particular concert, and as often as I am able, I go to a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert. I will tell you that it is not a calm and elegant presentation of the Christmas story. But it is a presentation of the Christmas story. My favorite of the three concerts that they perform is called Christmas Eve and Other Stories. I actually went last year. It was a wonderful experience. In that production, and when I say production, I mean rock opera style concert. In that production, there is a song called Promises to Keep. I want to read the words of one of the verses of that song to you. And the dream is still alive from that first December morning, and it always will survive as long as we can see that the dreams that we find in life are the dreams we tend to seek, and Christmas has its promises to keep. As we go through this Advent series of sermons and and other things related to dreams, I want us to think about not our dreams, but the dreams of God. And I want you to remember this thought, that the dreams that we tend to find are the ones that we look for. They are the ones we expect to find. So if we expect to find our own dreams, we will. But if we expect to find the dreams of God, when we look for God's dreams in our lives, in our congregation, in our world, those are the dreams that we will find. And we will find ways to make those dreams come true. Yes, this Advent series is about dreaming. It's not about any dream that I might particularly have. My dreams are are very unremarkable. I dream of snow for Christmas and realize every year that that's most likely not going to happen. Uh, It's not a life-size dream for me. I've had a long-time dream of writing a book that hasn't come true yet either. But the dreams that we're talking about are God-sized dreams, dreams that are bigger than anything that I could accomplish on my own, that you and I could potentially accomplish together. The only way we can accomplish these dreams is to do them in the power and the strength of God himself. So the dreams that we're talking about begin with God. God's dream, God's dream of having a close, intimate relationship with all of his people, all of us, all of his creation. That's what God wants, and we find hints of God's dream all through Scripture. In the early days of the Hebrew people, God spoke of his dream when he told the Hebrew people they were to be a light to the nation. In the words of Isaiah, we hear God say, My dream is that all people will recognize the glory of the Lord, that all people will see it together. We know that the Hebrew people had a dream about the same time that Isaiah was writing the words we've heard read today. And the Hebrew people's dream was that there would be a second exodus. They believed that God had promised a second exodus and that when that happened, they would be free once and for all, and God would no longer live at a distance, but he would instead live right with him. So we all have dreams. God has dreams. The Hebrew people have dreams. Isaiah says there will come a day when the mountains are made low, the valleys are raised up, the crooked places are made straight. The rough places are smoothed over. And the whole purpose of all of this is so that the glory of the Lord will be revealed and everyone will see it together. And then we come to the Gospel of Mark. Mark is so excited to be able to tell the story of the good news of Jesus Christ that he dispenses with all of the early years of Jesus, and he goes straight to ministry. He goes straight to the chase, and he talks about John. John is the one that Isaiah spoke of who would prepare the way for the Messiah, and Mark tells us what John has to say. John is telling the people of Israel, that they need to repent. 
and they need to come to God in a spirit of repentance, asking for forgiveness. John was telling the people that they weren't right, even though they thought they were, and they were surprised by this. This was not the message they expected anyone to hear, particularly not a prophet of God. This was not the message that they even wanted to hear, because you see, the Hebrew people expected that God would make things right in the sense that God would make things right the way they thought things should be right. They expected that God would make the world right around them. They never expected to hear that they needed to be what changed. They thought everything else would change around them, and when that happened, God would come and live with them. They were shocked by John's words. John was calling them to repent. John was calling them to be baptized. They did not believe. For the most part, they did not believe that they needed to be baptized. The only people who needed to repent and be baptized were the people outside the Hebrew nation who had come to the right decision and wanted to come and be a part of the Hebrew nation. So most people, shocked by John's words, just ignored him, or they were angered by him or they stayed away from him. But there were some people. There were some people who heard his message and took it to heart. They heard and acknowledged that their behavior, their own personal behavior and the behavior of the Hebrew people through the centuries had caused harm to God and to his dream of a close relationship, not just with the Hebrew people, but with all people. And their hearts began to change. And we would hope that as their hearts began to change, that their behavior would begin to change also. And their behavior would become less about maintaining the religious status quo and more about being a light to the world so that all might see the glory of the Lord, not on a highway through the wilderness, but in their own hearts and in their own lives. Now let me say, I have seen the mountains outside of Jerusalem. I have seen the mountains that might not be as tall as the Rocky Mountains, but they are every bit as craggy, they are every bit as hard and cold and barren. I have seen the deep valleys outside of Jerusalem, the valleys that come to such a steep point at the bottom that there's not even room for one foot to lay down flat in the valley. I have seen these places, the crooked places, the rough places. I know that these are the places that people who heard the words of John, people who had heard the words of Isaiah thought about. When they heard about the mountains being leveled, the valleys being filled, these are the places they thought about. I cannot imagine the kind of work that it would take to do what Isaiah was talking about except that it's been done in today's world. There are highways in and out of Jerusalem in a multitude of places, and they have leveled the mountains and filled the valleys in order to create the highways. But truthfully, I don't think that that's what John was talking about. I don't think that John was calling us literally to lower the mountains and fill the valleys. I think John was calling us to do something even more difficult. When John called the Hebrew people to repentance, when he called them to make their hearts bright, to receive the Messiah who was coming after him, he was calling them not to do the physical work of building a road through the wilderness, but to do the spiritual work of creating a smooth place for God to walk into their lives, into their hearts. That's what John was talking about. That's what he was talking about with the Hebrew people. That's what he was talking about with us today. So let me ask you, how is it with your heart today? Is your heart full of warmth and love and compassion? Or is your heart a cold, hard, rocky, and barren place? Let me say it's been a year. It's been a difficult year. It's been a hard year for most of us. And lots of people could see that as an excuse, as an excuse to be cold in heart and to be unfeeling. 
But John is calling us to remember that one is coming, and we need to prepare our hearts for the one who is coming. So how is it with your heart? How is it with your life? Are there deep valleys in your lives? Valleys that are so deep that you can't walk through them? Valleys that are so dark that no sunlight ever gets in? What keeps you from acknowledging God's dream to have a close relationship, not just with you and your Christian friends, but with all people? What keeps you from working toward that dream? John was calling us to make a passageway in our hearts so that we could truly fulfill God's dream of being a light to the world so that all could see the glory of God in our eyes and in our hearts and in our lives. John was telling people, the one who is coming is not going to be the Messiah that you're expecting. The one who is coming is not going to act like you think he should act. The one who is coming is going to truly be a representation of God. You need to open your hearts and be ready for that one who is coming. Change your expectations. Change your heart. Acknowledge that God is in control. Let God work in your lives so that your lives become a reflection and a pathway for God's glory so that it is revealed to all. John called the Hebrew people to change themselves, to be ready for God, to be ready for the coming Messiah. His call is the same to us today, to check our hearts, to check our lives, to acknowledge that God is in charge, and to ask God to change whatever needs to change in us so that we are ready for the coming Christ child so that we are ready to live into God's dream and be a light to all of the world. This is the call of John. How will you respond during this Advent season? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe that a voice cried out in the wilderness, saying, Prepare the way of the Lord. And so, we show up for worship, even from home. We march towards justice. We roll up our sleeves. We plant trees for our children. We make art. We choose hope. We gather at the table. We set an extra plate. We sing loudly with joy. We share stories and wisdom. We celebrate children. We fall together. We rise together. We love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for that next beautiful day. May it be so. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer now. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that there are places in our hearts that we won't let you in. We acknowledge that there are places in our hearts where you need to work to make changes, and we invite you in to do just that. Change our hearts. Change our hearts so that we are fully and completely receptive to the coming of the Christ child. Change our hearts so that When people see us, they see the glory of Christ in us and through us and around us, and they want to know this Jesus that we know, that we claim as Lord. Change our hearts so that there is a highway that reveals your glory to all, and that highway travels through our lives so that all may see. Hear our words now as we join our voices with people around the world praying the prayer that your Son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. As you leave this time of worship and you travel into the world, take with you the love and the mercy and the grace of the coming Christ child. Let that change your heart so people see Christ in you. Amen. 